Hello, Simon here with another Too Many Projects and today I am basking in a down jacket in the British winter and we're going to have a look at a bit of basic maintenance on the, on the Suffolk here. So there's three issues that need dealing with but today I'm just going to kind of see how much a bit of basic maintenance is going to help with those. First of all, it's a pig to start and I've been really having to fiddle with the choke and the throttle to try and get it started each time and I think a little bit of adjustment might help with that. Second of all, the clutch kind of goes off at random on its own sometimes and that needs adjustment so that's okay. Sometimes it just flies off when you're not looking. Uh, and thirdly, um, there was a bit of copper pipe hiding in the lawn last year um, and the lawnmower gave a pretty good effort to try and mow that piece of copper pipe so we're going to have a little look at that something's a little bit bent that might need bending back today i'm going to focus on fuel delivery if you're feeling observant you might notice the fuel tank's missing we're going to clean up the carb and intake and then check on the points and the spark plug and change the oil i think as well just a sort of basic service and i think that will really help at least with the starting and if we're feeling like we've got some more time today i might have a look at the uh, clutch as well so over the winter the fuel pipe went really hard i have a tendency to buy cheap crap fuel pipe off ebay i don't recommend it and so i've gone out and i've purchased a proper piece of fuel pipe and a new tap as well because the tap died over over the winter um, and leaked all the petrol out all over the shed but first of all I picked up the manual off the internet and printed it out and I'm going to set all the carburetor settings back as they should be from the factory because I had a bit of a fiddle with them and it didn't necessarily make it run better so this is the uh, Zenith carb which is Pretty boring and pretty standard on these mowers, but I've got the manual here, which is good. And it tells me I have an air regulation screw here and uh, a main jet adjustment here. The air regulating screw is three quarters to one full turn open, so I'm going to Screw that in till it seats. I'm going quarter, half. So it's going to be somewhere in between that three quarters and one turn. I'm going to go right in the middle of those two. And the main adjustment, one and a half turns open. So I'm going to close that all the way. That top screw was way off where it was supposed to be from the factory. That's seated. I'm going half a turn one turn one and a half turns that felt like it was a bit more i'll probably have to review the video but that didn't feel so far off um, now i'm going to just pull off the air filter and make sure that's nice and clean i did, did do this not so long ago and i improvised with a bit of a scouring pad as an air filter which is well let's have a look Bit of grass and crap on the outside, but nothing to worry about there. We'll just give it a wipe. And while I got the air filter off, I'll just throw some uh, carb cleaner up there. I have had the carb apart last year, just to make sure everything was, nothing was binding in there and there was no problems and there wasn't anything going on. It was nice and clean. So I'm not gonna bother doing that again just now so next let's have a look at delivering fuel to that carb restaurant all the parts for this mower are super cheap and pretty available the tap did come with some fuel hose but I didn't know it was going to come with that so I actually bought some pretty nice quality stuff from a company called Hosemaster you know, having had to replace this fuel hose a couple of times, I might have gone over-engineered here, but I got some stainless clamps as well, because the friction should hold these hoses on, but 
when I took the old one off it sprayed fuel all over my shoes so I got pretty pissed off and decided that I should try a bit harder. All right, that's good and tight. Pop that back up there. So my temptation is to want to clap, clamp this down the, the handle, but that actually ends up with a bit of a rise for the petrol at the bottom here. So I want it to be falling all the time. Slide that end onto the carb. There we go. That's a much better quality job, and I like this new tap. It's not one of the older ones where it's a push-pull. It's got a nice big off logo, so I can remember which way is on and which way is off a bit more easily. So this cover here is the flywheel cover, and underneath it are the points, which will likely need cleaning and adjusting. Maybe that's not the flywheel cover. I think the whole red bit is the flywheel cover and that needs to come off. Where are these points then? Silver bit off. Can I get something behind it? Yes. Plastic clip-in thing. Now, as I rotate that, find some points. Okay, so there they are our points. You see they move, so the engine rotates, and then I'm going to adjust them using this Imperial feeler gauge I found. I'm gonna check for a distance of 0 0.018 and 0 0.02 inches. I'll let you look at people who have better access to their engines to teach you how to do points on YouTube, there's some good ones out there. But that's where they are on this anyway. All right, with those points set, I'm gonna slide the red thing back on first, because I've got a feeling that, for your reference, the viewers out there, I didn't need to take it off. I am correct. Wasn't required to take the lid off here, the red bit, the cowl and I've only lost one of the nuts in the last few minutes, which is a success rate of nearly 70%. You can't argue with the stats, that's very good. Oh, look, a washer. I have purchased a new spark plug. Don't usually do this on modern spark plugs, but I'm gonna check the spark plug gap as well while I'm here. 0.02 to 0.025 inches. That's pretty tight. It does fit though. It's going to regap that plug a bit harder than that. There we go. Just do that up to exactly the right tension, which is not very tight. So, is the clutch in this side? I should check the manual really. Oh, that's a nasty old belt. How do these work then? So this is my clutch adjustment. It is fully adjusted. When I pull it, it's going to raise this tensioner, tightening up the belt enough to um, make the back pulley spin. So, why does it sometimes launch forward without the clutch being put? It's clearly right off to right on, right off, right on, right off, right on. Okay, so what I can tell from reading the manual and looking at it is a new belt is definitely needed. It was kind of adjusted anyway, so I've just loosened it off a bit more, which I don't think is going to make the slightest bit of difference, to be honest. And we're just going to start it on the ground where it won't so easily run off. I think that's the safest thing to do. All right, a bit of fuel. Test the fuel tap. I like using clear fuel hose. 
because it means you can see when fuel's going down it. A little bit of fuel now. I've never read the instructions for starting a lawnmower before. It's been quite interesting. So it says you're actually supposed to use the tickler till it overflows. Then it says you're supposed to set the choke to half at 45 degrees. Then it just says open the throttle. And that's always been something of a question for me. I've always thought maybe I'm not opening the throttle to the right place for starting. And that's why it's such an awful thing to start. And then it should just take one to two pulls to start. So I'll just do one gentle one to get everything moving. Okay. No sign of life yet. Nothing. This would be a much more fun job if it had a starter motor. Okay, let's have a rethink, have a rethink. So, I have double checked the points. I've moved them a little bit closer together. I think when I tighten up the lock screw, they might have moved apart a little bit and the gap might not have been perfect. I've cleaned them a little bit more. Um, fiddled with the spark plug. There's definitely fuel getting into the cylinder. So I'm pretty sure we weren't getting spark. Maybe those points have helped. I've also learned that you have to really twist the fuel tap all the way, but let's have another go. Okay. Oh, that's better. Oh, nearly. All right, that's 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 a reasonable idle. So I'm just going to leave that to warm up before we uh, drain the old oil out. We're going to put a heavy brake disc on it in case that clutch engages. This is what I'm up against, look, now it's warming up. It's just... The clutch is just slipping, I think new belts. I'm going to turn it off, chuck it up on a box, and we'll drain the oil now, I think. All right, so this is the drain plug here, and tilting the lawnmower is going to help it come out. So I think I'm going to probably get a bunch of oil everywhere here, but we will have a go. There we go. Yep, totally, totally missed. Hopeless, hopeless. Luckily, there's not much oil in it. Half a pint. 200 and, what, 84 mil, something like that. Not too precious about oily paving stones, luckily. So this is our dipstick and oil fill bit thingy. And takes off 2050. 2050, which is actually specified on the front there. I haven't got a 2050 on hand, but I have got a 1040 on hand. And so my plan is to change the oil once now with this slightly thin oil, run it on that for only a very short time, hopefully get it to clean clean out a bit in the engine and then change it all quite quickly again because I don't know how long it's been since this was last changed but I would imagine it's a very long time indeed. Okay, dipstick says 
half. Same again, bollocks. This black plate here is a deflector plate, which uh, is meant to direct the grass into the hopper. So I'm going to adjust that a bit as well. In fact, I'm going to do that now because I'm so bored of working with this oil. So if I... Oh, no. Look at that, no wasted time here. Let's have a look. Yes, just above the minimum mark. All right, so the mower works like this. There's two clutches in here, essentially. There's a centrifugal clutch under here, which, when the motor spins up enough, engages the whole drivetrain down the left-hand side of the mower here, which turns on your uh, cutter over here. Then the cutter is linked to the roller at the back, which propels it along with that belt we've had a look at over there. And so the problem we saw on the film a minute ago was with this clutch engaging this cutting cylinder too early. I'm going to see if we, now that the engine works a bit nicer and the points are all clean and it's got a new spark plug, it's got some decent fuel delivery, whether we can actually just reduce the idle a little bit, which will mean that there is a lower RPM on the engine when the throttle's closed. This clutch might need adjustment though, and I've never had a look at one of those before, so the next thing I'm going to do is to take that off. I've sort of had a look and I can't see any way to get this out of here to adjust the springs on the clutch without taking the engine off. So that's not a job for today, I'm just going to have to hold on to it for the time being and make sure it doesn't run off without me. But I have noticed that that line there should be fully inside the clutch drum. This whole clutch has, has moved. Oh, that's not tight. <laughs> ah, that's meant to be tight, isn't it? I didn't undo that. Let's do that up instead. Well, maybe it was just in the wrong place and that solved it. Let's get that cover back on though. I think what I'm gonna do now is start it up and give the lawn a mow, see how it goes. see now because it's getting dark but I went to line up the shot for the mow and then um, the mower won't move when I throttle up it just will not engage with that centrifugal clutch but I can kind of hear the engine struggling like it's got resistance and I wonder whether there's just something that's that's just binding it there but I'm afraid that's it for today <laughs> The engine's sounding good though, so that's step one done. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And hopefully more success on the next lawnmower video.